All right, everyone. So as I said, not only do I teach this stuff, I also do it for real paying clients. Um, social media is an important part of any uh, strategy for any business. Uh, throughout the course, I'm going to use a, a fictional business, uh, Victor's Bakery, let's say. And let's say I've got a website, and it's really nice, but I'm not getting any traffic. Uh, so to get traffic that's related to search engine optimization, SEO. Has anyone heard of that term before, SEO? So a few people. SEO is just basically how do you optimize your site so the search engines can find you. One aspect of search engine optimization is social media. So if you have a presence on Twitter or Facebook, that helps your SEO because you have a presence outside of your website. You have potential sources of traffic from other websites. That's the point of us doing social media. So we're going to start off with the first social network here is Google+. How many of you have heard of Google+, before? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you have ever set up a Google Plus account? Okay, a few of you. And how many of you that have use it on a regular basis? Very few. So if you haven't heard about it, Google Plus is Google's social network. Let's, um, if you don't have any web browser open, you can open a web browser. I'm going to open down here Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever you'd like. I'm going to open Google Chrome. And then let's go to this address that I'm going to type up here, plus.google.com, plus.google.com. So this is our login screen to Google Plus. Plus.google.com. Now, Facebook is the most famous and populous uh, social network. It has over 1 billion users. You know, that's 1,000 million. 1 billion users. And there's like 6 billion people in the world. So a huge population of the world uses Facebook. Um, what's the most, uh, do you, does anyone know what's the most popular uh, search engine out there? Google. Google search engine. Uh, it's become so popular, it's a verb, isn't it? You Google it. You search for something online. I think their name is going to be perhaps one day generic, like Kleenex. Kleenex doesn't mean, you know, facial tissue. Kleenex is the name of a company, but it's so generic, people say, hand me like a Kleenex. They're basically talking about that tissue, tissue paper. Google has, the name has become, I think, uh, almost generic in a way, because a lot of people think of it that way. You Google it. You search for it. Google is the big search engine. It's got like 60% of the traffic. When someone searches, 60% of the world is often using Google. Well, Google created their own social network to compete with Facebook because Facebook had a billion people, 600 million whenever, they, whenever Google Plus started. They had lots and lots of traffic. And Google uh, wanted to create their own social network to capitalize on that traffic. So you've got Google Plus as their own social network. And you think, well, I'll just stick with Facebook. And that's a fine strategy. If you really have to boil it down, if you ask me uh, for, for some advice, some professional advice, so well, I don't have time to run four social networks, which one should I focus on? I would say focus on Facebook because everyone's on it. The problem with Facebook is that everyone's on it. It's hard to stand out from Facebook unless we talk about the tactics I'm going to talk about a little later. So the next best thing is why don't we get on the social network that perhaps your competitors are not on and has a large, very deep connection with Google search. When someone is on Google search and they're looking for what's a good Italian food restaurant in Chula Vista, for example. These results that appear here are coming from a Google search. They're not coming from Facebook. A few years ago, Google decided to diminish, to some degree, the relevance in their search results of Facebook. That's not fair. I, I spent all of this time and effort setting up Facebook. It's not fair. But if we're playing in Google's playground, we have to follow Google's rules. Well, Google's not the only search engine, of course. There's Yahoo, there's Bing, there's Ask.com, etc. But Google does have 60% of the market share. So it would behoove us 
to get on Google's preferred social network so that we might perhaps get preferential results compared to our competitors. So that's why we're going to talk about first setting up a Google Plus account because that'll give us more of a heads up or a head start than our competitors. Now, Google Plus is linked to and is part of the whole Google family, the whole Google ecosystem, which includes Gmail, Google Maps, Google Earth, what else? Uh, uh, YouTube. YouTube is part of the Google family. So here when we come to plus.google.com, it says sign in. And you say, well, I never created a Google Plus account. If you've got a Gmail account or a uh, YouTube account or any Google account, you have already a login for Google Plus. Uh, how many of you have any Gmail account? Okay, a lot of you. How many of you might have a, a YouTube account? Um, so that means most of you have already a way to log in. How many of you don't have any Google accounts? What company Here's the thing. Good thing you brought that up. Sometimes it's easy to get ahead of ourselves. Um, of myself. Uh, Google requires that real people create an account and then create as many business accounts as they want. So um, I'm, I'm going to go through this as if I was brand new. I'm going to create a brand new account for Victor Campos. And then after I've created that basic personal account, then from there I can create as many business accounts as I want. So there always has to be a real person that creates a business account. And what we can do is, and what I do for my clients is, I create the, the client's account from my account, and then I set the, the, the owner of that business as a manager to the business account. That way they can log in with their own credentials. They don't have to log in through my credentials. We'll see later on that Twitter has that limitation. There's just one login to get into the account. So that means that the boss has the same login as the line cook for the Twitter account. Whereas here, in Google+, everyone has their own login to control the business account, and no one can see each other's personal accounts. So here, if you've got already a personal Gmail account, I recommend use that. Then we'll create these business accounts. If you want to keep it separate, you can create an account here, but again, Google wants real people, real names, to create these personal accounts before they can create business accounts. On these personal accounts, you don't have to set anything up. You just basically need to create it and verify your email. You don't have to put your favorite hobby and what your high school was and add your friends and all of that. You don't have to do that for your personal account. You just need to create one. We'll create one. And then uh, a business account. So here's your first task about deciding. Do I want to log in with my existing Gmail credentials? Or do I want to create a brand new account? Either way, we need a personal Google Plus account. Then we can create business accounts. I'm going to go as if, for a moment, as if I don't have any Gmail account. And then I'll come back and log in as if, as if I had one. The screens will be a little different. But if you don't have a, any Gmail account or would like to create a new one, at the bottom here you've got create an account. If you already got one, just hold on a moment. I'll catch up with you. It's going to ask you a few things. Again, you're going to fill this out as a real person. You don't want to fill in here Victor's Bakery. That won't work. You want a real name at the beginning. We'll create the Victor's Bakery account later after the personal account. And so it'll ask you to create a uh, Gmail account. Letters, numbers, and periods are fine. No, you can put January 1st, 1980. That's what I would recommend. That way you're, you're old enough to use the service. <laughs> I think you have to be at least 13 to, to use it. So yeah, you can make that up. That's fine. I, and I will. I'll put January 1st, 1980. If 
you don't want to put a gender, we have other. Um, and it says, okay, mobile phone and your current email address. This is, uh, this is optional but recommended, especially if you're creating a new account. Because your uh, Google account has a lot of content. Now it's going to have a brand new social network. It's going to have all that you have on Google+. It has your Gmail and all of that. And you've probably been hearing over the last several months, if not years, those scary stories about people's accounts being hacked and millions of passwords being stolen and credit cards and all of that. And um, one way to protect yourself against that is to have other methods of, of signing into your account. So if you do have your mobile number on this, then that means they can send a secure code to your phone to log in. So imagine someone guesses your password. Who would have known it was one, two, three, four, five? They guessed it, they log in, they have access to your account. Well, if you had it also set up with a phone number, it could send a verification text to you to, to log in. If the person that hacked your account did so, they most likely do not have access to your physical phone. So that's a layer of protection. So if you think, well, this is just some marketing, it's intrusive, they're gonna call me and try to sell me stuff. They've never called me up or any of my clients to sell me anything from Google Plus. So I think that's safe. They've never sent me excessive emails, um, marketing me stuff, and you can change your settings. That's also safe. These two are here in case you need to retrieve your account for some reason. So I believe you can skip those two if you don't want to do it, but I would recommend at least one of them. Perhaps if you've already got an email address of some other profile or some other... Does it have to be a Gmail address? No. Nope. This one right here, your current email? That one could be your company or Gmail or anything else. AT&T, anything. And then you have to prove you're not a robot by being able to um, add that number or, or write those numbers. There's a terms of service in there that is pretty convoluted, but uh, if you ever want to read it, you can, and the privacy policy. I haven't read it very completely recently, but there's a lot of stuff in there about, you know, um, you own the copyright of your content, Google doesn't, um, no harassment and death threats and all of that, you know, it's just common courtesy sort of stuff. Because Google is Plus is so integrated with other Google services, you may get this screen that says create your public Google Plus profile. Here uh, it's saying if you want your own personal account to be public so that you can um, contribute to restaurant reviews and rate videos on YouTube and apps and all of that, you could. Again, this is up to you to decide if you'd like to do this or not. I recommend it because, again, you can make all of this pretty private as much as you want. And also, if you are a local business, how many of you are local businesses? Independent small businesses and such. If you do set up one of these personal accounts, you can contribute uh, reviews of local businesses and then eventually become, I forget the exact name for it, but it, I believe it's called a Google Local Expert, something like that, where you get priority over other people that are not. Uh, you can get invited to local events and uh, free seminars and such. So if you have one of these uh, accounts, it's very helpful. If you don't see this screen because you went the other route, that's okay. I think we can activate it in another way. I'm going to select Create Your Profile. If you created a new a new Gmail here, make sure you write it down and your password. You'll need that to log in at some point. If you created an account from scratch like me, you might get uh, an option to um, import your contacts from other networks. You can do that if you want. I don't recommend it because your friends and family are going to get tired about getting invites to Google Plus. The fact of the matter is that people 
are on Facebook because they like Facebook, they're going to stay on Facebook. Even if they don't like Facebook, they're going to stay on Facebook. That's the thing about Facebook at the moment, that it's so, it, it's so it's such the 800-pound gorilla that, well, I don't want to leave Facebook all my friends and family are on. However will, I, however will I get in contact with them? Well, I don't know. So um, <laughs> don't worry about importing your contacts here. Again, if you're on another screen, I'll, I'll catch up to your screen in just a bit. I'm showing what this looks like as if you're a brand new account. Actually, I think if you if you do I think if you if you already do have a Gmail account, I think it's good to log in. Let me let me stop at this point if you are brand new. If you already have a Gmail account, uh, log in with it and let's see if my screen looks the same as yours. <laughs> So hopefully your screen uh, looks like mine. Eventually you might get different suggestions, but you want to click done on that, and then on the bottom right side continue. So what we're seeing here, <coughs> you're, you're fine with it, you might have already skipped our screen, you can't go back to it. What we're seeing here is uh, a recommendations to follow accounts. The point of this is that sometimes people create a Google Plus account, they, they would set it up, and then there's no friends and family there. And they say, Google Plus is a ghost town. I'm going back to Facebook. Well, the fact of the matter is that if you don't make any connections on Facebook, uh, on Google Plus, it will be a ghost town. And so, you know, people might say, well, my friends, none of my friends are on Google Plus. None of my friends want to join Google Plus. The answer to that is make new friends. There are, <laughs> keep them in real life, of course, but I mean, on Google Plus, uh, you can make connections with different people. Now, here it's saying connect with people, but again, right now it's, it's suggesting this to us as a personal account. We don't have to do this. We don't have to follow HDTV or Home Depot or whatever because we're not really going to use Google Plus for personal, uh, personal matters. We're going to use it for business matters. So I'm fine at the bottom here, selecting continue. We're going to skip this. So at the bottom, select continue. If your business was the same as Odyssey, would you not want to follow that to see if you would find that? You would, but right now we're still setting up our personal account. Once we set up our business account, we definitely will follow photography accounts. This is our this should be our personal account. Even though, even though I use this email at the top here, victorsbakery at gmail, we're still really on a personal account. And I can tell because I've got a little face, a little generic man right there. Once we actually set this up as a business account, it'll have a different icon. It'll have our company logo. So you can still use the same Yeah. If you've got a business address already, you can use it to set this up. It's just that it's asking you to first create a business account. That's why it's confusing to some people when we set this up for the first time. People sometimes set it up as a business account, and it's not functioning like a business account because we are setting up a personal account first. Then we'll set up the business account. So we're going to select Continue to skip this. It's going to remind you it might be lonely. Yeah, we're fine. Continue anyway. <laughs> This is uh, perhaps asking you to set up um, your information for your personal account. Uh, again, you can fill out as much as you want, as little as you want. I'm not going to fill any of this out. I don't care about putting in 
what schools I went to and connecting with my old, uh, you know, high school friends and such. Uh, because again, this is the personal account. We don't care about that very much. We care about the business account, which is in the next steps. Question? Yes. Um, I, I created a business account. I have a personal account. Mm -hmm. I created a business account, and now I'm trying to assign it to my personal account, but it's not finding. It just keeps going back to my. It's going to take down my setup. Mm -hmm. I'm going to if I click on sign in with a different account. Well, your, uh, so your particular situation might be a little unique. We'll have to wait during our first break to figure that out. At this point, I'm not going to fill in any of this just yet, so I'll finish that as well. So if we did want to do a photograph, can you put any photos you have on your cell phone? Sure. Phone and just yeah. Using your email? That's right. You can email a photo to yourself. And then once you have that e once you have that photo, then you can add it to your profile here. So we get to a screen that might look something like this. My looks uh, my screen looks smaller than yours, but you should see perhaps uh, a little welcome screen here. I'm going to close that. If you see it, don't worry. If you don't, don't worry. I'm going to close that welcome to Google Plus screen. You might get some other things that pop up that sort of tell you, orient you a little bit. Would everyone see something perhaps similar to this? With some content in the middle here, perhaps something that says Hangouts here. If not, don't worry. And then a top section about all friends, family, and such. Everyone see something like that? Anyone need a little help? Yeah, okay. All right, so again, this is the personal account. We simply want to create a personal account so we can create business accounts. At the top right corner, we should have your generic profile icon. This is the icon that we're going to use to create business accounts or switch between them. So we're going to remember in a moment to always take a peek at the top right corner. That'll either have our personal picture to tell us it's our personal account or our company logo to tell us it's our company page. So at the very top right, click on your icon. Some of you might already have a picture if it's set up through Gmail. But anyway, at the very top right corner, click on that icon. And it should say something like Victor Campos, your name, your email, add account. At the moment, we don't have any business pages yet. But this is where it would show us a list of all of our business pages. We don't have any yet. Keep in mind, this is how we switch between them, or one of the ways. We'll get a little bit of orientation of Google+, and then we'll create the business account. When we log in here, the first thing that we see is the content of the accounts that we are following. Um, Google+, has the concept of following and followers, kind of like Facebook, a personal Facebook account where you make friends, although Facebook is a bit more a one-to-one -one relationship in that if I know someone and I request them as a friend, they say yes, now we're both connected. We both have to agree to that on a personal account. Uh, Google Plus and Twitter don't have to be a one-to-one -one relationship. I can follow a variety of accounts and they don't need to follow me back, vice versa. I can have a variety of accounts following me and I don't need to follow them back. They might be interested in, in seeing what I have to say, uh, so they follow me, but if then I see what they're writing and I don't care, I don't have to follow them back. So it does not have to be a one-to-one -one relationship in Google+. We're seeing a lot of content here, perhaps, just so that it's not empty, so that it doesn't feel like a ghost town. There's content. At the top left corner, you should see an icon home. If you scroll down, it becomes smaller, just like a little house. But if you're at the very top, it's like that. Hover over that home button, and that button is always going to be there at the top left. It's next to the, Go it's next to the Google Plus logo if you don't see it. Uh, but if you hover over there, these are the different sections. We'll talk about them in detail. The one we care about right now is 
pages. This will also let you manage and create and switch between pages. Business pages. So we have a personal profile for a real per person, and then we have business pages for the businesses. And that's why we need to have this personal account first before we can access or create business pages. And we want that because then we can set every, every person in the company, we can all give them managerial control of the business page. We wouldn't want everyone to log in with the same personal account. We don't want everyone to have access to everyone else's Gmail. So let's click on Pages. Hover over the little Home button and select Pages. There's a video here. You don't need to play it, but it's going to tell you the benefits of having a Google Plus page for your business, that it um, helps your search, and if you're a local business, you can get a little dot on the map, and it look, works great on social media, and all of that good stuff. So at the bottom, you want to click Get Your Page right there. Everyone sees that button that says Get Your Page. So then you click that. And then it asks, Three general categories. Are you a storefront? Is your business a storefront, like an actual restaurant, retail store, etc.? Are you dealing with a service area, like perhaps you're a plumber and you go out to locations, pizza delivery, taxi, etc.? Are you a brand, like a product, sports team, music band, cause? If you're your own brand, let's say I want to get, uh, I want to sell my watercolor painting, so I could do brand. If you do storefront, you're going to be limited at the moment, perhaps, because it wants to confirm your location. Because think about this. What's to stop your competitor from creating a Google Plus page for your business and doing something bad? This is what's to stop them. If you go through storefront, it's going to ask for the location's phone number and address so that it can call you to confirm you are the right business. So if you can't answer the company phone line at the moment, you might not want to do storefront just yet. What I would recommend, though, is do brand. We can create 10 different Google Plus pages. That's fine. So I would recommend, let's create a brand page. And then once you can actually set this up properly by being able to answer the phone at the front counter of the store, then you can do storefront. You can change these later, <coughs> but I'm going to select Brand. What will be the name of your Google Plus page? Here you can write the name of your business. You can write capital letters, spaces, punctuation, etc. If you have a website, add the address. If you don't, you can leave it empty. type of page. You have a few options. I'm going to say it's a, um, it's a brand. My Victor's Bakery, it's a brand. It's, uh, it's selling baked goods, yes, but I'm also building a brand. I will select Agree to the Page Terms. Again, you can read those. Uh, read the terms at your discretion and then select Create Page. Let's go ahead and click Create Page. We get a screen here about uh, Welcome to my Google, Welcome to Google My Business, we brought you together, best of Google in one place, etc. There's going to be a tour here you can look at the tour a little bit later, but I'm going to... Maybe one question, core businesses, if we already have a Google Plus uh, uh, set up out there, do you recommend having multiple pages for a brand? I mean, does Starbucks have multiple pages or McDonald's or people like that? They could. 
they uh, they have the one big brand corporate headquarters, and then they could have the particular branch locations. On the previous screen a moment ago, I forgot to mention it, but at the very bottom it says, "Are you managing multiple locations?" And down there, there's a uh, there's a little there's some steps you can go through to manage multiple locations. So you could create multiple Google Plus accounts if you'd like. Hey, ladies, do you have a question here? Do you have a question? No question? So here I'm going to select um, to turn this off perhaps because if you don't want to get uh, emails uh, you can turn that off and on another screen that we'll look at we're also going to um, have the ability to turn on and off a variety of types of notifications uh, they don't really send a lot of emails I think but if you would rather keep your mailbox clean I would turn that off and I'm going to skip the tour. If you select Get Started, it'll give you a tour about every screen. That's what this class will be about in more detail. So I'm going to skip the tour. But then we get here the screen that is not available if you don't have a business account. If you have a personal account, you're not going to be able to get some of, the, some of this content, specifically analytics, like statistics, how many people are visiting my page, what's my traffic like? That's one of the reasons why we want a business account. This is not available on a personal. Question? Ask the phone number if, it, if it doesn't uh, want to work, we're going to take a break soon and then we, we can check. So if you got to this point, we're going to take a break in a moment, but if you got to this point, notice it's saying to fill in some bits of your profile here. Um, a profile picture, for example. If you, if you um, want to be taken seriously, you want to fill out your Google Plus profile for your business as, as complete as possible. Remember, the personal one, you don't have to fill out, you don't have to really use it. This is the one where you want your company logo, your about us information, your website address, and such. And you can do that. Notice it says next step, next step, etc. So we're going to take a break at this point for you to go through these steps. Fill out as much of it as you can. If you if you have it at home, well, you can fill it out at home. But fill out what you can here. Um, but if you don't have a picture, you do want to get one as soon as possible. You can do, you can do that at home. We've got here a cover photo, which is this background picture. That's more of the branding, which is recommended, so your profile doesn't look generic. Um, Contact information. What's the best way to get in contact with you? Phone number, email, address, etc. If you've got a website, there's a few steps to verify your website. I'll talk about that a little bit later because it's a bit involved. The introduction and biography and such is also important to, to fill out. Well, what's, what a, what a, what's my company about? I think people can kind of understand what Victor's Bakery is about, but if I had a bit more of an esoteric name like PMD Interactive, perhaps I might want to fill in what it what the company does. That's step number five there. And then number six is also sum up your page with a catchy catchphrase to stick in people's heads. That's the tagline. That's the slogan. Think about the slogans and taglines for companies, Nike, McDonald's, etc. They've all got some sort of one sentence that should be catchy and, and is, it distills the essence. So it's uh, 1.30. Let's take a 10-minute break. You can fill this out if you'd like. Take a 10-minute break until 1.40 and then we'll continue.